Uh, next time is tomorrow night, 7-10, uh, here on MMS. And they'll play them Wednesday and Thursday. So, um, Guardians, number one in the division, yes? Your yes. first place. Jesus, I was listening to the Thank Reds' Jesus. White Sox game yesterday in the car. Reds at Comiskey. These guys just cannot get anything going. They still only have two wins. Dude, they're 2-13. and 13. I'm like, what is happening here? It was like 4 to nothing for the first, 4 to nothing Cincinnati for like the first five innings. Like, what, what is happening here? Anyway, Guardians are killing it. 11-5 and five, uh, right now. And uh, they got one over on the Yanks, I think, over the weekend, yeah? Yeah, just Extra one. innings or whatever? Yeah, yesterday, extra innings. Yeah. They got the, they got the win. Yeah. A sacrifice fly. So my White Sox, man, are just abominable. 11-4 to 4 was the final yesterday at Comiskey. Hmm. Reds beat them 5 to nothing on Saturday. Beat them 11-1 to 1 the first game, so they sweep them. They, they've one of the two wins they've got were against the Guardians here in Cleveland. Correct. But had nothing to crow about because the Guardians still took two or three of that home opener series. Man. This is the, the series against the White Sox is the first series that the Guardians have lost this year. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah they're doing real well. Yeah, they're looking good. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah. Uh <clears throat> I don't know. And the Pirates are my National League team, and they're doing okay. They're doing all right. I mean, you know, they're... I feel like they always start off hot, and then they even out. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. I mean, same record as the Guardians right now, but they're in the same division as the Brewers, so that's going to pop them back a bit. Anyway, whatever. That's a tough division, too. Yeah, it is. Yes. A guy who bought a Wayne Gretzky rookie card for millions of dollars in an auction, uh, has buyer's remorse. Yeah, <laughs> this is idiot. A guy. Ah, this is a guy with clearly a lot of money and time on his hands and no family to spend it on. Uh, a guy in Canada who's a very uh, successful real estate uh, person up there. Uh, the man... Who, won, who placed the winning bid on a multi-million dollar case of hockey cards, which included Wayne Gretzky's rookie year. Now says he doesn't want them anymore, and he's going to try to find a buyer for them. A guy named Jack Orshosky is a big-time real estate guy in Ontario, and he won the auction for the case. An unopened a box of uh, hockey cards from the 79-80 season. And he paid three point seven million U.S. and included Wayne Gretzky's rookie card. And now he has not paid the full amount, so the auction house still has the cards. So it's not like they're on his desk, uh, and he's already uh, looking to sell them. Uh, now they're saying that the the case itself could have as many as twenty five Gretzky rookie cards in it, and a in a single. Gretzky rookie card uh, sold down here for like four million dollars. But he this guy don't even deal with it. This guy clearly uh, doesn't have anyone around him, or because he's like, well, I. What did he say? He said he wants to find a better home for them, so he'd uh, like. He said we're, we're Wayne Gretzky himself. What are they kittens? <laughs> we need to find a better home for it. <laughs> I don't know. So passionate about it as these. I've seen like other people uh, in the sports collecting world, like how they're so into it. And it's like their, their lives kind of revolve around it and, and they're so passionate about it. And so for yourself, again, explain uh, how it is that someone who's uh, works as a real estate agent and has never gotten into the high stakes world of sports collectibles uh, decided to spend $5 million on a, on a 79 Opichi box. The winning bid for this. Um, this guy looks like he's having a hard day. You know, I know he's yeah. got this box of cards uh, now, but this dude looks like he's been up for about a week. 
He's hating life right now. Mega box hockey cards really originated uh, from when I was back when I was like seven years old, where I met a girl in my class. Her name was Elise. And I uh, really think that I had a connection to her and that she was my true soulmate. And she was interested in hockey. So I actually. This dude is still pining for a girl from when he was seven. This poor man. This guy's going to hurl himself off the roof. Mm, worthy. Joined a hockey team. Basically, I actually have one of Wayne Gretzky's uh, 1979 rookie cards myself. Right. And that's what piqued my interest when I heard about the auction coming up and I was following it. Um, now, with regards to resources, I had a, an uncle who was um, fairly wealthy, and he, when he passed away, um, I was fortunate to receive a substantial inheritance. Oh, so from. he got inheritance money. Is mm. he still trying to impress the girl from when he was seven? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> He didn't he, inherit a girlfriend. He said he... <laughs> It'd be wild if you could, though. He said he <laughs> chugged Red Bull all night to keep him focused and sharp in order to continue bidding competitively. He said, but now the spark just isn't there for him when it comes to card collecting. Uh, he's reached out to Drake's people. He's reached out to NHL team owners and Wayne Gretzky's family. He's even thought that maybe he would gift the cards to Elise, his true soulmate, from when they were seven. Oh, God, there's something terribly sad about this guy's story. I met a girl when I... Do you even remember the people you met when you were seven? Every single um, one of them. First grade? There was... Uh, seven! Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katie. <laughs> okay. Are you making these names no, up? Jennifer. You remember these people? Yeah. Jennifer Johnson. Give me okay, Jennifer Johnson. Johnson. Oh, that was my co- uh, one of my college girlfriends' name is Jennifer Katie, Johnson. What was Katie's last name? Johnson. Were they all no, related? No, 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 no. Katie Schmady. No, no, but there was a there were the Smee Juz. They were on my bus. So you remember these kids from kindergarten? I I saw one, first grade whatever the, because the the one from like my one friend, she lived on the Smee. Uh, she I saw her when I was in Goodyear the year I went by myself. Yeah. We hung out. They also were any of them your potential soulmate? No, no, I don't believe in that. Traditionally, you go to school with kids the whole time. Like you meet them in first grade or kindergarten, and then you go to school together until you're in high school. Unless oh, not my school. Moves. They churned over the entire class every year. No, there's kids that I met in preschool or kindergarten that I graduated with. I mean, I feel like it's not unusual to know someone from first grade. Yeah. I mean, by the time I got to second grade, like, three kids had died in my class. Dude, you have a tragic life. No, my life's great. The things that you say. I'm alive. (laughs) Those kids had a tragic life. They died in the first grade. That's crazy. That's crazy to just say that. Susie Luther had an enlarged heart. She died in in first grade. Um, Jeremy Palecki had... He got hit by a car or something. Yeah, we had three kids dead by the second grade. That's insane. Pretty wild. But I no, didn't realize- I'm alive. I, I I wouldn't. I don't have a tragic life. You've experienced. Oh, a of lot course. Oh, more yes. Tragedy that I feel. Like I feel that same way about my mom. My mom has experienced an just insane amount of loss. Yes. And I get it. Some people do start losing people early, and that's like a theme throughout their life. Someone's always dying. And that's crazy to me. My 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 most vivid memories of childhood were going to funerals. That's. I didn't go to a funeral until I was, like, 13. Yeah. Yeah, well. Um, tiny black suits. I looked good in them. I've uh, got to give you some money here. It is $1,000, a chance for you to grab some cash from the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Money. That's money. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Um, Jason was Bill's friend that he wrote all the poop songs about. 
what somebody texted. Is that true? You were writing poop songs about him? Not what? <laughs> a while back, we were talking about some guy. You mentioned some guy where you were like, "Hey, that guy pooped his pants or whatever." No, that wasn't Jason. Wasn't the oh okay? No, not that. Not Jason that. Jason got Jason. married to poop. No, no, I don't know what Jason to married to. poop. No, oh, the, okay. The, the, there was. I mean, I could not tell you. The one that pooped his pants that, I, like, everybody made fun of was, his name was Tyler, but I'm not going to say his last name. Yeah, of course. But, I mean, you guys are from here, too. So, conceivably, you could run into somebody you went to school with, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's never going to happen to me. Like, it's, but. Brian bought a house in my hometown. There's people that I'm like, yeah, I've known that person 30 years. He's like, you're 34. I was like, I, I know how mad. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know how old I am, and I know how long I've known them. I mean, my oldest friend now that I'm still, like, talk to and in contact with, we go back to sophomore year in high school. I don't have any friends that go that fully far back. My couple of my best friends were from, like, sixth grade, but the only, I would say, friend, and her and I only talk a couple times a year, um, but it is very, like, pick up right where you left off kind of thing, from elementary school is Megan. Uh, Megan Placco. She's married now. Megan Tischer. And we became friends somewhere in like the first, second grade era. Somewhere around there. And we remained friends all throughout high school and stayed in contact with college. Like, she still comes to my shows. Like, uh, her parents come to my shows. Like, she's probably the oldest friend that I have. That I still... And we don't talk every day. Like I said, a few times a year that I communicate with somewhat. And these are people that you're happy to talk to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I weren't happy to talk to her, I wouldn't talk to her. There's, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a hundred other people from school that I don't talk to. Right. You know? That'd be weird. Like, I, I know people who have, um, you know, obviously, you know, our friends here are from here. And so it's strange people are like, oh, yeah, this buddy of mine from junior high or whatever. I'm like, I got wow. friends from, like, yeah, like, one of them's from, like, second grade. And, again, it's kind of that similar – Mary situation where we talk once or twice a year and we catch up and everything, but we you know we. But you don't have like a long time. But you don't have like a close. I'm, I'm not talking about like satellite people. You don't have a close friend from like, you know, third grade, sixth grade, sixth My grade. Kelsey, Kelsey. No, I don't. Who, have that. Her and I are. Uh, we hung out where our families were on vacation at the same time. Well, like she, her, she and I became friends in sixth grade. My life became so wildly different after I left the church that. Like, even though a lot of my school friends weren't, I mean, I was gone for two years right. without contacting anybody, so that was weird. And then when I started doing comedy, I made all new friends, so my oldest friend right now is probably Jim Twos and Marty. Now, hmm. here's my question. When people only have a group of friends that have been the same for 30 years, like, they only talk to people from high school, Secret do you find gaze. that as a red flag, <laughs> or do you find that as, like, loyalty? I mean, I just think it depends. I think it's a red flag. I I'm think like, it's a red flag too. How have you too. made no friends throughout your life? Right. It's like the same four dudes that have been hanging out since seventh grade. Maybe they have and a secret like, that they all got to keep, and they don't want to let anybody else in because they might tell them that. That's a good one they, too. Someone uh, died. Yep. That's a figure them out. <laughs> That's not real life. Sometimes your life's couple- stranger than fiction, Mary. I go back and forth with it where I was like, I love that, you know, you guys have been through so much together and now you're raising your kids together. There's a cool aspect to that. But like you didn't make one friend in college. Yeah. My middle you brother worked with somebody that you like stayed close with. My middle brother was friends with a guy that we knew mm-hmm. from like grade school. He had been friends with him for stayed friends with him for a long time. But he finally was like, I got to get out of this. He's like all his friends are the same guys he's known for what, you know what I mean? Like, my brother kind of peeled off. He's like, I got a life, man. He's just hanging out with the same dudes. Because for that to happen. It's a little sad. No, there's something. But for that to happen, to keep that circle intact, none of you have to move on. You know, it's not like each guy is slowly peeling off because he got married or had a kid. They're all in the same group all the time. We... Went to a gathering. I'm going to try to be as vague as I can. We went, Brian and I went to a gathering where there were- Of the were, Huggalos? Of the Huggalos. It was so much hugging. And that you don't want to move on from. No. You know? Nope. Um, you get the paint on your shoulder. Yeah. Pretty, it's pretty sweet. This sounds like a sex party. 
It's not a sex you. party. Why is everything sex with you? I challenge you to go one show without making a sex Why, party. Mary? No. It's a universal thing. Absolutely not. Why? Because why Why does it have to be the first thing you go to every time? Why can't it be the third or fourth thing? Why can't you think of something else Are first? you counting things on him? No, but I'm saying that if it's- <laughs> All right, just tell us about your sex single, party. <laughs> every single time it's about anything, the first thing you go to is sex. That is not every true. Time. He's it horny, is. Mary. Gross. He's a horny, horny man. Whatever. Anyway. Just because you don't want to picture him having sex. We're at this sex party. Making love and- to his woman. No, that's I don't want, you're, see. This is what I'm talking about. Don't even <laughs> bring that crap up. I didn't bring it up. He brought it up, and then you and brought she it up. The sex party. She belabored I the point. Bring up the sex party. You were trying to be vague, but it's obviously oh a sex God. party. This is a gathering of the huggalos. All right, so go ahead. All right, tell your boring story. It doesn't story. matter. No, the story's over. Well, no, it's I done. want to hear it. No, I didn't no. bring up sex. Why are you punishing me? <laughs> All I'm saying was, Brian and I went to a. Uh, People I've known for a long time went to a gathering, and then I didn't notice anything different or weird, but as we were going home, he was like, how long have, has that group of people known each other? I was like, the whole time. Like, the only people who we didn't, I didn't know from school were spouses yeah, or, like, a dates or whatever. Because it's all super and, inside stuff? or And he was like, I felt like that was two hours of people talking about high school. And yeah. I was like, yeah, it pretty much was. And I didn't realize, that, like, looking back on, he's obviously someone who doesn't know any of the teachers, like, the parts of the school. I was like, oh, my God, I didn't realize that they just talked about high school for two straight hours. But even like, if you did know, know all the did. teachers, like, why talk about, that's why I, then, yeah. I don't ever go to my high school reunions. I'm like, I don't care. But it's not even that. It was just like a like an event. It wasn't even yeah. like... Like, a, like, hey, let's get together and talk right. about high school. It was a, oh, this is what you guys do. They organically pivoted right back to high yes. school. Yeah. Yes. Alan, I've known my wife since the third grade. Yeah, you might want to keep that to yourself. Everybody thinks that's some brag. <laughs> Were you also in the third grade? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could I get some clarity on that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was a sophomore <laughs> in high school, but she was in the third grade. Oh! <sighs> All right. I'm going to break here. I want to send a text, 35192, alancoxshow.com for everything else. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7.